So similar to the way that a personal computer has become a part of our everyday lives, in our work, in our homes, we see robots having a similar future. That day is getting closer. Uh, it's still a long way off. As a community, a lot of us have wasted a lot of time reinventing the wheel. The goal of PR2 and ROS is to provide a common platform that people can build on top of and extend and can also share the results on more effectively. With the PR2 beta program, we're giving out approximately 10 robots at no cost to universities, companies, and hackerspaces. Getting PR2s out to the community is all about enabling code sharing in the community, enabling all of us to more easily build on each other's results. Every little detail of PR2 and ROS is intended to make your development experience better. One of the features software developers will love about the robot is the computers. The robotics algorithms will take up as much power as you can give them. So we've included two computers, each of which is an 8-core Nehalem Xeon with 24 gigs of RAM and 2 terabytes of disk. The hard drives on the servers are externally removable, so that as a software developer you can get large amounts of log data off the robot quickly. Our focus on PR2 as a developer platform means that one of our priorities has been robustness. Software developers need to be able to innovate, need to be able to experiment directly on their robot. At the core of innovation is the freedom to make mistakes. So this door used to look like a normal door without all the scratches and missing paint. But then PR2 came by and we're trying to make PR2 open doors. And just in developing the code, often we knew things were going to go wrong. We just wanted to see in what way they went wrong. In most robots, you would damage the robot, or you would create a lot more damage to the door than just these scratches here. That ability to just keep on experimenting is what PR2 is all about. ROS is a software development platform that integrates many libraries and tools that anyone working on robotics needs so that they can start working at a higher level when they begin. You start out with libraries for everything from low-level hardware drivers up through navigation and 2D and 3D perception. You also have a full set of developer tools for logging and playback, calibration of the system, and even tools to help share your code with people at other labs. This is Arviz, our 3D visualization environment. It's showing us the robot's eye view. We're seeing where the robot thinks it is, as well as the data from the laser scan. Arviz lets people see what the robot thinks is going on, as opposed to what is actually going on in the world, which can often be two very different things. Because all the libraries and development tools are open source, People can use them freely, people can improve on them where they don't meet their needs, and people can develop new capabilities and easily share them with the rest of the community. One of the things that's really exciting about ROS is it's available to anybody. So even if you're not a part of the beta program, you can still download ROS and develop either on your robot or on simulated robots. Over a dozen institutions, corporate research labs and universities have released open source code for ROS. The open source community around ROS has been amazing, and we're excited to see what happens now with the beta program. What we've seen is that once people port ROS to the robot, they love the development experience and the tools that it offers them. The capability to do debugging in the real system, the capability to visualize and log their data, and the capability to share their code with other people. The PR2 and ROS are intended to bring the community together so we can build on and improve on each other's results, and we want you to be a part of it. When everyone works together, we can work more quickly, we can work more efficiently, and we can accomplish things much bigger than any one institution or individual could accomplish on their own.